details on the show. But you get my first pair this week. Good luck. Car 10. These are yours. A day to remember. And pals. 216-578-1007. To win or 800-348-1007. One of life's most pressing questions. What do I like about Alan Cox? Finally answered. Um... All right, I don't like much about you. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Three five one nine two. Want to send me a text? Cavs play tonight. Trying to break the skid. They lost their last three. Charlotte in town tonight. The Hornets against the Cavs at the Romo Fijo. That is a 7 o'clock tip-off tonight, so we roll at 6.30 and then right into your uh, Cavs pre-game coverage on MMS and then on the iHeartRadio app. And then these guys go to Charlotte to play the Hornets on Wednesday. So a um, little cooperative crossover there. Uh, Bridget Linton is sitting in for Mary today. Mary's out all week. Bridget has not been here since the 1st of February. I know. It's been a while. And a lot has happened since then. Yes. The uh, – uh, you went to the Super Bowl yes. because the Browns were in it. <laughs> I <Yeah>. wish. <laughs> I wish. I feel like I manifested it on the show, though. Remember? You guys asked oh, me yeah. if I was I going. I do remember. And it was literally the following week. I'm like, I'm still working on it. Yeah. And I, I made it happen. Last minute. Last minute. Yes. It all came together. Um. So, and they take care of you. I mean, because a lot of times when you make something happen, I've been in a situation where you finally make something happen, but they just they get you in. You're there. And for yeah. the Super Bowl, it's great, I assume, to just be there. Right. But it would be nice to be there. So remember, I always um, preach to you guys, really, networking is the most powerful tool you can have. Mm-hmm. Make sure when you meet people, you remember them, see how they can help you, how you can help them. It's a skill I learned Some when I did tall, very weird. transactional in mm-hmm. her in relationship. <laughs> Some other tall, saying. like, weird dancey girl told me something like that. I can't remember who it was. <laughs> I told you guys. No, you got to It's all about the people you know. So through my years in sales at ESPN, it really taught me the power of networking and relationship building. Uh-huh. Okay. So last year, I am at a Raiders game, and I am in a suite because one of my best friends, her cousin used to be the GM for the Raiders. So we're in a suite with some pretty fancy people in there. And in my mind, I'm already thinking, I know this is where the Super Bowl is next year yes. at Allegiant Stadium. Who do I need to talk to to make sure I'm here in a hosting capacity, an entertainment capacity. Planting what, 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 the seeds yes. early. Yes. yes. It's very impressive. Luckily, there were the, some of the Super Bowl committee was in there, so I tried to keep in touch throughout the year. And I mainly always went hard with the Browns, like, hey, the Browns are looking good this year. Hope mm. to see you again when they're playing in the Super Bowl and you guys will be there working. Like That's the way I kept in touch. And always, when, they, when they stopped wiping the tears of laughter from their eyes, yeah, oh, then they would start having you know, a conversation with you. You know, and they kind of did, which was a little disappointing. <laughs> so when the Browns made the playoffs, I'm like, yeah, in your face, Super Bowl yeah. committee, I'm going to be there. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, it ended a little sooner than I had thought. So it was right up until that last minute. I'm asking them if there's any opportunities, I'm there. So it did start off as that. They were like, hey, we do have one. However, you're going to have to pay your own way here. We can try to get you a hotel room. And they give me the pay. At that point, it's a wash. Like what yes. they're going to pay you for the gig for travel. And yeah. at this yeah. point, it's so last minute. Flights are really expensive. The hotels are expensive. So I reached out to someone I knew from the Raiders. And they're like, hey, we actually have a block of rooms at the brand new Fountain Blue. And we're not going to use all of them because most of us Shut live here in up. Vegas. I can give you one of those rooms. Great. So check that box. Someone else I met. Another person that I met in Miami, <laughs> a different point, who also works in the entertainment space that I knew was going to be in the Super Bowl. At the Super Bowl, reach out to them. Hey, if there's any opportunities. Yeah, you know, I think that we're going to be able to make something work here. So I'm like, all right, two gigs, got a place to say, we're going. Yeah. So You're piecing it together. Yes, piece it all together. It was the one time all of my networking finally just came to fruition and it all worked out. They said, have you ever seen the movie Requiem for a Dream? Because, uh, anyway. No, okay, go ahead. Uh, (laughs) Have not. And sorry, I tell long stories. That's a little transactional. Yes. I I posted a meme the other day. When I say long story short, then I end up telling (laughs) you like the two VHS tapes of the Titanic. That's That's all right. I've got time. I'm telling you all the details, but we're going to get to the main point. So I get to Fountain Blue, and what I learned is this 
Fountain Blue had only been open for one month. Their goal was to be open before mm-hmm. Super Bowl. However, they really wanted it to be the hub for all the celebrities and the entertainers that were coming for the Super Bowl. So I'm seeing all kinds of celebrities just walking around, which mm-hmm. was pretty cool. A nice brand new hotel. Brand new. Yeah. So I'm staying in this very fancy room. Again, it's for reserved for people that work for Allegiant Stadium yes. and Super Bowl Committee, and yep. they just gave me one of their rooms. So they let me know, oh, there's like a credit on the room too. So if you want to get any drinks, you want a massage, whatever. I'm like, what is this lifestyle? You have worked your way into I, the glitterati. I tapped into this celeb lifestyle. Yeah. So I'm like, well, why not? Why not get myself a pedicure? So I'm thinking I'm going to the spa. Oh, no. They're like, no, we come to you. Come to the room. I, I, guys, I, I I don't know that world. I And the lady that you was giving me that my anymore. pedicure, she was like, thought I was so funny. She's like, you're like the nicest person because most people are like, expect this and yeah. they're kind of rude to them. I'm like, no, I like feel like I don't deserve this. Anyways, of course, I'm asking her 5,000 questions. Like, who's the biggest celebrity that you've ever had to work on? Who has the ugliest feet of yep, anyone I asked that. in sports or Hollywood? <laughs> she said she's been so Besides you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know I have dancer feet. I know mine are pretty bad, but anyone worse. So Are you Shaq? <laughs> <laughs> she did say she has done Shaq's pedicure, by the way. Oh, boy, that's a tough one. <laughs> she said she's been living in Vegas for 25 years. So yeah. I asked her, I'm like, well, what about this week? She goes, well, it's still early in the week, but I have had to do some people that are staying here. I can't name names. But one specifically was a little disappointing. Like, what do you mean? And she wouldn't tell me who. All she said was it's a multi-Grammy award-winning artist. And she had this person on a a pedestal (laughs) and was so excited to meet her. So I knew it was a female. And she said she couldn't say that she was rude, but she's like she didn't speak, did not tip her, made her wait 90 minutes. Oh, no. Standing in her room as, like, this person was just talking to her agents or whatever. So she missed other appointments. But how do you say no to this multi-Grammy award-winning artist? So needless to say, she had this person on a pedestal and then was very disappointed. I'm like, you can't give me any hints. She says, no, I signed an NDA, but you'll know when it comes time for the halftime performance because she's a surprise guest. It was Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. Wow. Now, did she mention that it was harder to do her pedicure because she had been up on a pedestal? <laughs> she didn't, but I'm sure it was. Very oh. difficult. Yeah. You know, that always, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say it bums me out because I don't care. But you really are leading a different life. But I also wonder, like a lot of these people, Alicia Keys, right? She didn't grow up rich. Right. So I'm always like, at what point in your fame and fortune did you go, eh? I'm going to make the pedicure lady wait. Just, I don't think uh, she thinks about it. I think it's an afterthought. I think you've been functioning that well, way that's, for so long. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. At what point does it become an afterthought? Because you, because there's a lot of people who are wealthy and famous, and they also famously treat everybody very nicely. Right. Yes. Because in the back of their brain, they're like, thank God that's not me or whatever, or I'm, I like to take care of people. And then other people, you're like, you know. Well, this was the most shocking. So that was because I Alicia Keys to me, not that I know her, but she Especially seems like a down to earth person. Well, that's what I'm saying. Her in particular is somebody who's like d- trying to be down with the people, and she's from right. the Bronx or whatever it is. It's and, like, like promotes natural. That's like, you don't kind have to of be, a bummer. You know? I mean, you can promote natural and still be a dick, but I mean, yeah. I, I wonder at what point you go. I'm in Vegas, and I'm going to make the pedicure lady and wait not 90 minutes. Her. Yeah. Well, then she said, I go. Well, who is one of the nicest people that you expected to be rude? She said, Mariah Carey. She said she's one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet, had conversations with her, tipped her well, all that. So if you would have told me uh, Alicia Keys versus Mariah Carey, I thought Mariah Carey would have been the diva and Alicia Keys would be super sweet. Pedicure lady told me it was the opposite. Now, was she kind enough to place you on the Mariah to Alicia Keys scale? I think she was just, like, fascinated by me Mm -hmm. because she's used to really high celebrities. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. She's like, Like, do you want me to teach you how to do this? (laughs) She's like, you don't have to keep thanking me. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do. She tipped you? Yeah. 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 Um, I'll play a little bit devil's advocate for Alicia Keys in this situation. Okay. She was performing at the Super Bowl halftime show that Sunday, so her head was probably a little bit preoccupied True. with that so you could and she was you could, in hiding no yeah. one was supposed to know that yeah. she was performing so, like, so you so couldn't see her she she might have been uh a little wrapped up in that and and if you have phone calls and you're trying to get that all squared away 90 minutes can go by real fast and you didn't even notice that you're making somebody wait as long as you did so I, that that's all i would say for that i don't know if that's 
how she always oh. acts, but the, on the week where she's the surprise performance at the Super Bowl halftime show, you might be a little bit more on edge than you normally would. Like, well, so I get a pedicure might, that day then. But she might not know. Like so Again, I, she these people have managers and assistants. That's true. Like, yeah. She probably was like, oh, I didn't know this nail lady was waiting in my room. My bad. Like, you know. True. And then she saw her waiting. And I, I just remember when Nick Jonas came here, everyone asked me, like, oh, my gosh, you met Nick Jonas. I was like, I kind of met Nick Jonas. He was he didn't here. Say, yeah, yeah, he came here, but he didn't say not one word. So I was like, mm-hmm. I can't get a read on his personality. And I think that's by design because he doesn't want someone saying he's a dick or he's, like, super nice. Like, those people are just always so sealed up tight yeah. because – they're always afraid of offending someone. Maybe you I, reminded him of Priyanka, and he didn't want to get uh, a little turgid. <laughs> I I would like to play a little role play here where, uh, Bridget, you're going to be me. Okay. Doing all the role, the, the uh, networking stuff that you do, but you look like me. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm going to show you how people. Bill. I'm going to show you how people will react to that. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Okay. okay. All right. Oh. oh. Oh, do you have oh, a... we're doing phone no, calls. No, no, we're doing a phone call? Oh, we're doing like a cold call. I, I thought it'd be more of a... Oh, It's right. about based on looks. Like, she's, oh, face to face. She, yeah, she's doing all this networking yeah. in person yeah. in yeah. a yeah. suite. Yeah. 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 I thought these were emails no, being no, exchanged. No, no, this is not email. And you this had is... a photo above no. your email no, signature no. No, this or is... your social media handle, and they go, I'm yeah. sorry, we don't have any... No, this Yowza, is... I think I found Instead, something. this is me in the suite at Allegiant Stadium a year before the Super Bowl trying to schmooze my way into... You know, I, I host stuff. I do a lot of the yeah. similar stuff. So uh, go ahead and take it away. Okay, so I'm you. Yeah, you're, you're but me. I'm acting as me. Like. Yeah, but you're you're. Okay. Networking like <laughs> <Okay>. you, <laughs> but I, as me. Okay. Hi, my name's Bill. What's your name? Um, I, who 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 are you? <laughs> my my name's Bill. Bill, why are you here right now? Bill, well, I work for the Cleveland Browns, and I'm a comedian. Oh, wait, I'm you. I forgot. I don't work for the Cleveland Browns. I'm a comedian. <laughs> I'm a host. <laughs> And, you know, I got invited here. I have a family member that, you know, has connections here. And okay, I just would love. That's nice. Well, it's nice to meet you, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to role play. I have to, it has to be the moment, Bill. You hear that, Again, guys? That's not, that's not how it would go. You hear no, that? No, no, it's exactly how it goes. Okay, Bill, do I'm you actually you... go up to people, just walk right up to them and say, hi, I'm Bill? No, but See, I. See, that's what you got to do. That's what I do. I. I uh... I mean, I'll say hi. I'll be like, hey, I'm Bill. I'm, and and they'll be like, like, you're a comedian. I'm like, okay. Uh, And they'll be like, oh, you're a comedian? Uh, Got any shows? I'll tell them, here's where I'm doing shows. And they'll be like, and and I I could say all the things that you said in the right way. And they'll be like, great for you. They're just good for, like, there's not, there's not, there's not that. You haven't seen me in action. I'm a hustler. Well, then I I think I need to hire you as my agent. And you can, you can do the hustling for me (laughs) because you can make his pedicurist wait 90 minutes out in the hallway. (laughs) Yeah. That, that, uh, how many times if you say, like, you know, I'm Bill, and they ask you what you do for a living, and you say, oh, I'm a comedian, nine times out of ten is the response, tell me a joke. Yeah. Is that so, isn't that so annoying to you? It's a very, yeah. And I yeah. go, no. Yeah. That's, that's not, not how they're it not, works. They're not, they're not made for this situation. Right. Like, You're not I telling come, jokes. Come You're, you tell stories that yeah. are funny. Yeah. Alan, I've, bet, I've met both Alicia Keys and Mariah oh. Carey. Um, Mariah was undoubtedly the nicer of the two. Wow. Mm. That is, it is shocking. The pedicure lady also said, because I asked her who's the biggest celebrity she's ever had to work on, and it was a tie between Mariah and Beyonce, and she said they were both very Grace, lovely, yeah. but Mariah even more so. Yeah. Which, I've been judging Mariah. I mean, she puts it out there that she's a diva, so I just expected it. I don't think she does. I think the media does, because she's Maybe. always late, and she... You know. Yeah, that's diva behavior. That's how they arrive at that. They but didn't that pull it out of thin. Didn't plenty, pull it out of thin air. Oh well, no. I, I know yeah. plenty of girls that are the sweetest people, but they are, they will be late for their own funeral. Like they are always <laughs> late. They can't tell time. <laughs> Not at all. Like they'll get up earlier because they know that they'll. And they're usually late, and then they'll still be late. They're like, oh, I was doing my makeup. I was doing my hair. Like my bad. As if they've never done it before and so, don't know how to back time mm-hmm. it. They'll take mm-hmm. a call yeah. and they're like, oh my gosh, I forgot. I was getting ready. I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, that's considered rude in a lot of ways. But it was a good time. You had fun. And it oh, was, it, was it was the most yeah. unreal experience ever. Yeah. Because then I didn't even know if I was going to get to the actual game. It was just a lot of events that I was working leading yeah. up to it. And then, again, just kind of like the hotel room situation, they said, hey, we do have a ticket. I'm expecting to be in the nosebleeds. Yeah. I'm like, whatever, just to be there. Across literally the one, one single ticket. And I'm like, okay. I literally went by myself. And I'm in this loge area. 
and I look and I can see, see that the suites are filling up behind me. That's where they were. I'm like, how am I here? This is crazy. And I see Donna Kelsey in the suite directly behind me. Like, if Donna Kelsey's in that suite, then I know who else is going to be in that suite. Yeah. I don't care about Taylor Swift, but I know that she's going to have her posse with her. Right. Sure enough, she's right there. I was more impressed with Blake Lively, obviously. But. And what? Yeah. And and when she saw it, Bill, when she saw that that low suite filling up, who do you think she saw it filling up with? If Taylor Swift was there, I mean, if it's Taylor Swift, <laughs> it's probably Taylor Swift fans, which I believe Bridget has said that Taylor Swift is music for fat, ugly girls. Oh yeah. you know, man. You know, for people just tuning in that have never heard me on a show, I did not say that. <laughs> or maybe I did. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I love it. You know, she just got back from the Bahamas. Her and Travis Kelsey were in the Bahamas. God, I just got and back from the Bahamas, too. That's what I'm saying. Did you run into a bunch not. of ugly girls there, too, that were waiting for autographs or anything? I know they took a picture. Kelsey, Travis Kelsey is like... Was in Geraces or something, the slice yeah, up around here. Yeah. And so they post a photo and they're like, just got back from the Bahamas. And then there's this big article with obviously all these, you know, paparazzi hiding out on the beach and with Taylor Swift in the water with Travis Kelsey. And I'm like, obviously, if you're her, you know that's going to happen, but it's still got to suck. You're running around in yeah. a bathing suit and you're like, Oh, God. I wonder if he's used to it or this is new to him. Because he was, like, already a celebrity, but not at this but level. But not at this level. Like, yeah. you don't get followed around like that. And how do you think they... Tight end. How do you think they broke out the the checks? What do you think I they know. did with, like, all, the room service bill, the flights? I, I imagine the, she covers they, it all. You think you don't like, think they split everything? I don't he think... He makes tons of money. They make her money. not, like, billionaire. Yeah, yeah. right. She's a yeah, billionaire. He is doing very, very well. But I right. imagine she's just like, I'm just going to take care of this because I've... In the time it takes for me to finish this sentence, I've made enough money <laughs> to cover the entire... Trip. Trip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Flight and all, so... Hmm. God, what all right. Life. Yeah, right? Yeah, and they're in the water, and she's holding mm-hmm. a plastic cup, so they're drinking. You know, they're having fun, a little PDA. Yep. And, um... You know. I mean, it confirmed that it's real. Because I think for a lot of people, they're like, is this real or is this a publicity stunt? I, I don't mean, think, I, I mean, I know people said that, but give me a break. Like, it, well, there's, I mean, there are a lot of the people that say that are also the people saying, well, this is a psyop. So <laughs> to, to get Joe Biden reelected. Yeah. Because he's with it, Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I saw pictures of them making out in the water <laughs> Joe Biden and Pfizer. <laughs> Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> were they making out or was Pfizer trying to re- resuscitate him? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but but the, you were in the Baham- Bahamas are fun? I mean, the Bahamas are... It was a day. So it was part I've been of the, the Bahamas. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was a part of the Browns cruise. Yeah. So it was the first is that one, one ever. Is that one of those cruises where the boat gets stuck and everybody has to poop everywhere? Bill. What? <laughs> <laughs> Cleve- Cleveland Browns. Oh, okay. I don't Cleveland, know. Browns. Cleveland Browns. I've heard of them, yeah. <laughs> you see why yes. people, my networking goes wrong? Yeah. <laughs> When they say, tell me a joke, and that's what you say, they're like, yeah, no. Is there poop everywhere? <laughs> hey, where are you going? Hey, we've talked about poop cruises a bunch of times on this show. We certainly so, have. That's, that's, certainly that is have. not outside the realm of possibility. It is an inevitability. Yeah, true. Yeah. True. yeah, but you didn't get sick on the cruise or anything like that? No, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. And no one did, shockingly. I mean, there was almost 400 Browns fans that went on. We had yeah. 16 alumni. I was hosting it. it. It was so much fun, but I thought for sure at least one person would have gotten seasick. or. How long of a cruise was this? Um, Five days. And you were on the clock the whole time probably, right? Yeah, until yeah. like after dinner time, then you could let oh, loose okay. a little bit yeah. and have some fun. But yeah, I was Like you're hosting things with players and fans yeah, throughout all the whole day, day long. Yeah. So people go, oh, God, your life must be so tough. You have to go on a cruise for work. Yes, the weather was lovely. But you're not <laughs> kicking it in the, the hot tub. Yeah, yes. You're not in the pool. Yeah, right, right. right. I, had, I get I had it. one free day, which was in Jamaica, which was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, what city? Uh, I don't know. Probably, um, <laughs> Wait, uh, what's Ocho the- Rios. Well, there's What's Kingston, the, there's Ocho Rios. I What's mean, the hometown of the fastest guy alive? Usain Bolt? Yeah. In the grill? Because when I, so we got off the ship, and then we had to take a bus to this beach where we were having this, like, you know, private Browns party beach. Oh, he's from Sherwood Content. Well, with, well, I, I all the, the, the tour guide said. Everyone, welcome to Sherwood Content. <laughs> the tour guide said, and this right here next to us, well, in her Jamaican accent, this is Usain Bolt's high school. You, you can't do the accent? Usain no, Bolt's yeah, high school. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I just figured we were in his hometown, but maybe not. Well, that's like the northern part of the country, which obviously would be the uh, closest to the United States. So that's probably where they stop. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. No, when you said it, I would know it. It was like I want to start saying it started with an F. I don't know. 
Anyways, it was beautiful. And there's then we literally a place. There's literally a, p- a place in Jamaica called Brownstown. Did you no guys way. go there? Yeah, should have. Like right near his hometown. Well, missed opportunity for us. Mm. All right, Falma- Falmouth. Falmouth. Yeah, that's the one. Falmouth. Yeah, that's the one. That's, that's where you docked. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. like near where he grew up, I guess. Okay. In yeah. the middle of cockpit country, <laughs> <laughs> Jamaica. I love you. Docked, docking. Remember that? Ah, uh, boy. Do you remember docking? <laughs> Well, Is that what the boat did? Well, uh, wait, I learned something else last time, too. I forget. You sure did. You learn something new every time you're on the show. I know. I don't remember what that was. I certainly hoped that you would remember it. Right. And do- docking's not. the one that really sticks with That's me. That's the one that stuck. Mm-hmm. And the weekend's coming up. <laughs> All right, I got a break here. If you want to send a text, 35192 to do that. Want those hate breed tickets? They are coming through two hours to midnight presenting the hate breed stop here. It is the 30th anniversary 